Oh man. Oh man. It's birthday time. It's at their birthday time. <laughs> That's an official official decree. Birthday time. 35 years old today, man. Crazy. I'm getting the white in my beard. I don't know if you guys can see that. The lighting's a little blown out today, but that's okay. That's okay. Actually, it looks like the supernova is back here. Let me go, let me go, let me go shut that off. And I know why. Here's why. Uh, that's what you need, kids. You need a bounce light. You need a bounce light when you're going live, man. Or else it just falls apart. <laughs> All the lights are messed up. That's fine. That's fine. We're going to continue on with our Dark Angel fan art um, today. I'm excited. I've actually been like raring to go there's a there's a tv show that i really really love to watch episodes of on youtube um <gasps> crow yours is today too dude january birthdays i've been saying this on twitter and insta and all places i've been getting tagged a lot january birthdays are the best they're just i mean it's you're starting the year off right with a january birthday happy birthday man absolutely toast to you my friend all the January birthdays, especially January 15th, because you know who else? Don't know. There's a lot of history buffs out there, but Crow and I... Oh, Big Des, what's up, man? Uh, you know, Crow and I got the same birthday as the one, the only Martin Luther King Jr. Just saying, heroes are born on this day. Except for that fucking Ben Shapiro guy. Fuck that guy. That's right, I said it. <laughs> like, a, like it's a hot take. Uh, anyway. I'm excited to, to dig into the Dark Angel stuff today. We got about two hours even to stream today. Uh, my my afternoon's kind of busy doing a bunch of family stuff, which I'm excited about. Making brownies, we're making Swedish meatballs, got a big thing going on. Mm, it's going to be good. But uh, yeah, so we're going to do that. I've been trying some new rendering techniques and stuff because, uh, like I was saying uh, a little bit earlier, one of my favorite shows to watch on YouTube, to have one in the background... It's called Portrait Artist of the Year from Sky News or Sky, you know, um, basically like, I don't know if it's the same type of thing as like a BBC programming, but uh, Sky shows it, Sky Arts, and they, uh, it's really cool. It's like a reality show, but you get four hours to paint a sitter, portrait, all these different styles and stuff. So like watching these people, I was like, man, they're all so good. You know, I like doing portraits. But then they would give little hints, like as they're doing stuff, they're like, well, the reason why I do this is blank, or I, I like to put in the color first and then mess with the value. Or like they would say some stuff, and I'm like, that's a good idea. So I started getting all antsy. Um, I, I have a uh, like a Samsung, um, one of these Note 10 Plus phones that actually comes with a pen. So I was drawing on my phone last night because my iPad did not have battery in it. Um, so I'm charging that for tonight to do Procreate and all that stuff. But like every once in a while you need that refuel you need to see other people working and like show you something and you're like that's cool that's a good idea um and i'm, I'm hoping to bring some of that in today so we are going to continue um our our uh yeah dude it, i love that freaking show like of course me and the wife since it's on netflix we love like great british bake-off like that type of, it's just fun like it's wholesome but it's good it has drama but it's not like combative it's really cool um and like our our uh, you know eight-year-old daughter um watches it so it's like you know that's cool stuff but then whenever we started portrait artists she fell asleep within like three minutes she was like i can't <laughs> I don't get it. Like I, you have to have a certain something. But I, I just love it. Seeing all these people work different is, is great. Uh, but today we're gonna push this to more of a final render. I don't know if we're gonna get done with it necessarily, but we're gonna get pretty close. I think. What I would like to do is at least get um, the rendering on kind of the face, the hood, maybe the upper armor, and then we can maybe start on the the tabard part. Um, 
yeah, kind of work on the values, work on the rendering a little bit. Uh, but overall, I mean, this is kind of where we left off last time. We started putting the correct insignias on here. I think we're just going to do a fan art piece of Zachariah, which is our boy right here off the GW website. Because that way we have a set reference. We know where stuff goes. We know what he looks like. It's just easier. Um, we are going to do a human face with the uh, augment biotic eye. We're going to do that. Uh, yeah, kind of put this crest in there. Um, and then just start rendering. Just start rendering out, which also means I really have to lighten this tabard part. That's a very important thing that we got to do. Because we want it to look like the reference. We want this to match. Yo, Mo, what is up? Oh, it's so good to see you. Ooh, pottery and sky. See, I'd be into that too. That's a thing I want to get into is like uh, some sort of sculpting, like whether it's clay sculpting. Apparently... A lot of Warhammer artists, like the old, older school, like Igor Sid, Paul Dayton, um, guys like that, would actually build stuff in clay. They wouldn't make it one-to-one, -one, so it wouldn't be like an exact replica. But to get the lighting, they would build clay little, like, I can't remember what they were called, not minis. But um, there's a term for it, to where it's almost, you know, those gumpy uh, art dolls that can pose and stuff? They would make their own in the poses. But then they would add the, the, the density of clay in the certain spots and they would get incredible results from it because then they could take photos and then bring that in digitally and then just paint over it and you already have your lighting set up. It's almost like 3D sculpting, um, which I'm also kind of interested in, but it helps because you get to learn structure and form and like how does light hit things and like go around it and it just adds believability, which is cool. <laughs> the Great Pottery Throwdown. That's the coolest name for a show. <laughs> it's like a way better version of like Beat Bobby Flay or something. Um, absolutely. So I think last time we said I am going to make this gun a bolter. I don't know if that really like does that break lore? Does that break kayfabe? Does it matter too much if Sakuraya uses a plasma pistol or a... I mean, because if, it, if it's lower intensive, man, I want to stick to lore. But also, there's this nice middle ground with Games Workshop to where you, you can, you're can you allowed to stick to the stuff if you're doing official art. You know, they definitely want you to stick to the IP and stuff. But Warhammer is also a game about making your own stuff. So like your own factions and your own kind of sense of reality. So they give you leniency, and that's fun. Um, and of course, this is an official art for them. But it's good to get that practice in. Um, it's Bake Off, but with pots. Hey, I, I can dig it. <laughs> I can totally dig it. Um, yeah, so I, I overall, I think we have a decent structure here. I'm wondering... Something that I am noticing. I wonder if this side... Rocky, whatever makes sense or if I should get rid of that and we put something else over here something more thematic than just like here's a rock because we can do the cityscape stuff because see remember we have all these pieces um clouds I mean but see, here's like just generic foliage. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just. But then you can also see, yes, yeah, some Space Marine stuff in the back. Um, and here's just rendered out land with comets coming down, meteors hitting. I don't know. And what's nice, come over here, turn the color back on. You'll see everything's fairly desaturated. Uh, so it sticks to the grays pretty well. Excuse me. So, yeah, kind of like nice purples and stuff. Like, I really like that color scheme. And the nice thing about doing this, like the nice uh, purples and stuff, is the green for the armor would really pop because, I mean, they're complementary colors. So you have your purple, so if we had really dark purples, and then really bright, rich, 
kind of olive green colors, I think that would be like a, that could be a showstopper, you know. So you can carry an auto bolt rifle or a stalker pattern bolter or a bolt carbine. Okay. Thank you, sir. So let me go Warhammer 40k auto bolt right or let's do bolt carbine bolt carbine ah yeah so that's kind of what the shape we have so yeah we could do the bolt uh yeah bolt rifle okay so something like let me zoom this out so what i'm seeing is something like this so we got something like this and then it shows more of the the bolt rifle which would be this which with a bolt rifle since the size of it we would put the strap on it we, we put the not lanyard but whatever that's called um because it would make sense to just have it hanging off his person you know because i think we have something close to this right now like we could easily adapt this to be here um, and what's nice about Pure Ref <laughs> Yeah, I did notice that power sword based on the model um, Should I Do you think Let's try something here Let's select all, edit, copy merged, edit, paste. Okay. Would it make sense with what we have right now? Taking her boy, Zachariah, and moving him over. That way we can put his other arm in there and then maybe that that power sword kind of coming down at an angle almost cutting a 45 degree cut in the canvas and then what we could do really if we did that since we have that line down there to frame zachariah better up here in kind of this upper area we can have that same angle kind of a parallel line but that's the line of the clouds kind of going that way. That way he's framed, but not by a box. He's framed by like these diagonal shapes, like pointing towards him. So we can see, we can, let's see what that looks like. Cause that's the nice thing about being at this stage is we can still like do whatever, you know? Um, I mean, you can really do that at any point, but once you find the real, um, the real composition that you really, really like, it's usually a good idea just to stick with it. Um, all right, oh, there we go. Come on. So if like we were to come over here, let me get rid of these. And then if we were to like, and same thing here. Oh, come on. Really? You're going to run like... You're going to run real bad on me, Photoshop, today? Hmm. That's how today's going to be. We did this. We could get rid... Oh, wait. Ha. No wonder that wouldn't go, because... All right, um, okay, so here we have like, let's 
So we'll just kind of extend this out. I know he has his deer right there. So like, something like this and then his power sword okay so that's just a straight up sword then like there ain't no there ain't no fool in that one um oh wait let me mode always on top since we have that sword let me turn this here yeah, just try to get that angle a little bit. Something like this, and then... And really a nice trick for uh, oh, a nice trick for getting really straight lines is just box it, box it in with a marquee. So if something like this, and then this can come down here, continue on that way. And we'll, we'll put it, we'll put his hand here, of course, but like, just to see if that reads okay. And then, of course, like we said, we can bring this through. You have something like this. And to frame him, we can do something rugged like that. But then, this is where we could. Press this forward a little bit. Because mm. really it's about framing him. He is the main idea. So framing him in such a way... down a little bit. Let me load up. My old 2020 brush back, because I think I have some cloud brushes. <laughs> Yes. So if I had like white, oh, white, 
There we go. Bring that darker. We could even do dark right here and paint over our good pal. Because remember, the goal for this one is to actually get that uh, <laughs> brush TLC. So these are brush packs that I have made. Like, but I have so many brush packs. Oh my god. So it depends on what type of vibe I want. But like, I have three brush packs that I sell. Uh, well, I say sell. The May Sketch Today one's free for anyone. Um, on the old Gumroad channel. But uh, yeah, platinum brush set. So... Um, that is one of those funny things that with digital art, you'll have a lot of people come in and be like, what brush do you use? What, what brush is that? And to be fair, you can make any painting with just a hard round default brush. You can. But I would be remiss in saying that uh, having custom brushes that act like oil painting brushes or like acrylics or watercolor help tremendously. Uh, and that's why so many different, uh, hard round, man. I'm, I'm more of a believer in hard round than ever. Um, in fact, let me show you my sketch that I did before we started today's stream. This was just like a, uh, Zerg thing. It was based off a of wallpaper, but this was probably 10, 15 minutes. But what I did is I, uh... Let me break this down. This was a... Uh... Yeah, so uh, I started off with, let me come in here, edit, fill, whites. Perfect. So I started with a super hard sketch, you know, literally with like pencil brushes. So you can see how like weird and graphite -y it is. Uh, and then I just went over it with a hard round to outline it. And I was like, I actually like how that looks. Like, it's not perfect, but I kind of like that vibe that it gives off. And then I just came in afterwards and put in values. And yeah, easy peasy, you know? Um, but yeah, I think doing sketching and then hard round brushing over it for your thicker lines is a cool look. I'm just not very good at it yet. So I decided not to try that on this <laughs> maybe on our future stuff we can but like i don't know i don't know i'm not brave is what i'm saying basically i'm 35 and i'm not brave you know the, that nondescript background is fine enough it's fine <laughs> it does its job for grim darkness you know what I mean? Like, cause like all these other ones, and these are actual full on approved games workshop book cover. And like, look, I mean, you can see some shapes and they're defined and stuff, but the rest of it's just, yeah, like this one. We've got some explodies in the background. We could do a little explodies. That's fun. Yeah, I, I, I vote we rock it out. Um, what we could actually do now, before we start rendering, because this is where you can get, uh, we can either do full on black and white render, which is fine, and then add color on top. But to get the best of both worlds, from what I found, the best of both worlds is whenever you're at a place kind of like this, you have the structure that you want, you know kind of where you're headed, now add color. Because you can see it a little more clearly, you can see what it, the final thing is going to look like. And then you have colors to work with whenever you start rendering the final. So it really does look like a full-on painting that you like started with color. Because sometimes what it looks like, if you start in black and white and you render it and it looks beautiful, and then you like color overlay or multiply layer or something color over it, 
the brush strokes you do for adding the color do not match the brush strokes that you did whenever you rendered. So there's a slight disconnect. It can still look super good. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've done it a ton, especially with soft round brushes and stuff. You can't really tell the difference, but if you want that slightly more gritty, realistic painting approach, put the colors in now, and that way you have a roadmap that you can kind of work off of and riff off of as you're rendering. So not only are you adding more color and more subtle shifts, but you still have your value intact. So I'll, I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, I know we said we could do the nice greens here and then a nice purple for the background. So it'll kind of match this bluish purple here. So let's go ahead and block that in. Let's go select all, edit, copy merged. So we have a brand new layer. Let me bulk all this stuff right here. Set up one. Oh, we already have a setup one. Um, set up a two. All right. So now we have this. Let's come on over here. And we are going to add some color and let's do it as a multiply layer to start off with because I'm curious about how this would work so if we were to have that okay that's kind of a mid-tone a little more saturated blue something like that so this should come in pretty dark if I guessed it correctly so let's actually come back to our platinum set. Okay, soft round brush. Here we go, soft round. All right. So already that adds a little something, right? But you'll see we have some reds and some nice like, let's warm that up a little bit. We can even push it a little darker here. Yeah, let's, there we go. And then we'll come back to the blue, lighten it, add some saturation. color shifts there then let's do that old olive green so greens are tricky because greens can look like neon Gatorade if you're not careful um, but you'll see here these are almost like yellow greens they're like woodsy greens and the same thing for the uh, the games workshop model 2 like olive green and like deep leaf green is usually your best bet. And then for your highlights, that's where you can bring in that neon Gatorade um, look to it. So if we go with the green here and we bring in something like this, yeah, this should work okay. So if we zoom out, if we kind of get if we get him sort of centered in Let's figure this out. We'll probably even hit it more with a highly saturated, but I like keeping that, that sort of dark, dark green. What if we bring this, cause this is in the light? Yeah. Hit that. We'll go back over that white here in a minute. But you'll also notice right here, it's almost that dirty, grimy, yellowy. So we'll come in with that brown. We'll kind of hit this right here. Let's 
And basically this just gives us a little bit of something to work off of. Uh, I don't like that as much. Bring that back white a little bit, maybe a little into something. But then we'll go back to the green. We got that nice metal, almost like a blue. Yo, my man hexed. Oh, Doug, what's up, brother? Yeah, yeah. Who that there? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So if we hit that up a little bit like that. She right there. And then this gives us a little a little something something, you know, gives us a little a little bit of stank to work with, as it were. Before we start really going into render, this will at least give us a little color palette to work off of. What I could really even do if I get super lazy, which might actually happen, I can import a a a photo or or the picture of one of the like the model itself have it on the other window and like color select directly um thank you brother appreciate you man thank you for that sub too that's that's dope we just painting you know we just doing the painting thing um something that i do know i want to actually like, cause I, I love that color scheme and we, we will definitely come in because really what it is is it's blues and purples, but then the gray is kind of the bridge between them, you know? I am gonna hit this a little more with this style brighter just to kind of really refine these edges in the background. Cause I think the reason why Warhammer art works so well is, I mean, you look at stuff like this, and it's just nuts, the amount of detail. But I bet if you looked at the sketch that the person has, I bet it's just a very dark figure. You know, you have your orange red, or yeah, your orange reddish light coming this way. Oh, Mo! Feeling the love. My friend, gentlemen, and scholars. In this one, in this stream feels so good you get the oranges you get that bounce light but then you see that smogginess back here this is another light so you have like two like hitting up you know um be good job. oh i will find you that's like liam neeson uh, true story i think uh hex zero is liam neeson i have it on good authority that that's true um but yeah, so you have your two main light sources and then each thing facing if it's facing the orange light You add some orange to it. If it's facing the green light, you add some green to it. It sounds really basic It's very difficult to do to remember it. But like if you simplify it like that, you can you can really make for some Really kind of remarkable looking art um so that's kind of what we're going to go for. We're going to do the cool diagonal line clouds, really bright. And then we might actually do that nice, uh, we could do an orange right here. And then we can do kind of the smoggier purple back here, maybe. Because that'll help us render. That, that'll help us render quite a bit, actually. So if we come back over here, and we do a color dodge and we add nice kind of reddish orange light. See, that's already, we haven't even rendered anything yet. 
and that already popped it. It pops it pretty well. Um, I don't use color dodge a lot unless I do lighting like this. And then it comes in super handy whenever you first start putting those light sources in. So then if we came back over back here and did like a darker purple, like from back here, you can see that it lightens it up a little bit. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Straw is a savage. Dude, you are crushing it. Look at this, look at this. Oh, and Guildhouse Games, by the way guys, Go follow Guildhouse Games. They are the creators of Varia, uh, the card game that I'm working on. L look at this train, man. That train, the hype train is real. Goodness, unbelievable. Straw, my friend, Dark Sight, welcome. Welcome to the Hobo Nation. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm just gonna call us the Hobo Nation again. We're, we're just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna do that. Um, so so yeah we're we're just crushing it man we're just trying to have a good birthday and you guys are making it great amazing uh but as i was saying go follow guildhouse games uh go check out the card game varia it's super rad you can play a free demo on the website um think of like of course you know you have your hearthstone you have your magic but what's really cool about varia is it introduces board game mechanics so you have dice rolls so you have that little bit of like the warhammer I know my army's technically better, but if I don't roll well, it could be anybody's game. Varia brings that in a little bit, and we're we're I, and I'm not going to spoil anything, of course, but we're working on some mechanics right now that like will mess with your head. You know, if you think about magic and how they have blue decks to where blue decks will like cancel or your counter or your dispel or your something like that. Think of that, but then amp it up like three more times. And it really starts introducing like actual chaos to the game board. And I dig that a lot, <laughs> like, because now you never know what your game is gonna be like. And you're gonna have that water cooler story of, well, this was going great and I had my plan and I put this down, but then this thing happened. Like, it's awesome. It's super rad. My favorite Space Marine chapter it's, it's going to be trite. I know. I'm not going to say Ultramarines. Don't worry. Do not worry. No, no, no. Not Ultramarines. I might say the Space Wolves. I like the gimmick. I like... I, I like the, the wearing an actual animal pelt. You're bringing that fantasy into the sci-fi. And I can dig that. I did one of a... Oh my god. Who carries Frostfang? Lemur? Russ? Is it Russ that carries Frostfang? I did freaking fan art of him, like, last year. Um, <laughs> but, like, I love that, like, these are Vikings. They are coming at you. There is no mistaking. You know what I mean? There's something dope about that. Um, I also like the White Scars. I know that's pre-heresy stuff, but... The, the, I'm liking the, the, what is it, the Mournival? I, I'm reading Horus Rising again, which is why I bring it up. Um, just got past the part about Jubal, which, you know, don't want to spoil nothing, but... Mm, mm, freaking Rift, man, the warp. It's real shit. Ragnar Blackmane, that's who it is, yes. Yes. So that's, that's who I did uh, Blackmane, and that's just a cool name. Anyway, um, for commission drawing, it really depends. Um, I mean, sketches start at about 25 bucks, but if it's like full on, you want to print it out, that type of stuff, I mean, you're looking at anywhere from like 250 to, I mean, I've, I've literally run the gamut. I've done stuff, I've done book covers, I've done album covers, I've done portraits for people, like family portraits, and it's anywhere from, you know, 250, 300, a rough starting estimate all the way up to you know 14 1500 bucks so um and that's just for that then you get into you know other types of commissions and you you work out those deals but i'm always i mean i'm open for especially for the hobo nation if you guys got some needs i know i'm talking with leonis right now about doing some of his twitch stuff like the banners and everything so i'm still into that as well 
But primarily, like, if you want, like, fan art, if you got a character, if you like something, and or I did some art for a D&D group recently. So, like, if you're into that, like, let me know, and we'll work something out. I mean, I'm super open to that, you know. But, yeah, it's nice now. Having Warhammer, to your credit, <laughs> really opens up commission possibilities. It really does, man. And, like, one, once I'm super stoked for the Varia stuff to hit, because that's my... Um, just crazy. Oh! Uh, a hype, a level 2 hype emote. Man, oh man, seven subs, dude. Crazy. Seven subs, it's like our, I think that's our record. That's our record that we've ever had. Um, so yeah, you guys are getting special emotes. Right now. For that hype train, so I appreciate you. <laughs> it's coming out really neon bright 80s. Um, but hey, we can do that. We'll spice it up. We'll keep those in there. Um, the <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a madman. Straw is on fire. It's like you, you, you get, you get uh, emperor. Like, what we need to, we need, we need to make the tier list again, because then it's like uh, <laughs> the trade's gonna keep rolling. That Vice City plug's gonna keep happening, man. Oh my goodness, unbelievable. Redonkulous. Look at that. <laughs> that song's just gonna. Uh, that's hilarious, man. Appreciate you so much, man. Thank you all for being here. Um, God, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> oh, does he have the same bolter? I was just looking at that. Hold on. <laughs> oh my God, Silent Storm. There's so many names. Oh my gosh. So let me do let me do a little name shout out. The Knight of Renan, of course, Hollow Destruction, Mr. Harry Longbottom, the best hobbit there ever was. Sam, Sam Stray, hello, hello. S J A S S Jaws 88. Um Silent Storm. Chris, my boy. Um man, it, oh my goodness. Hello. Van Osdell. Oh my goodness, everybody. Welcome. Hope you're having a good time. I'm just spouting nonsense. Stalling because I don't really know where to go from here on this picture. <laughs> um No, I mean we're 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 in a good spot. We're we're at a good we're at a good deal. Um so this is kind of a nice reference to have because of uh We see the greens. We see the greens, we see how these highlights are hitting. So we can really kind of use this lighting. We can use that light, and that way we can uh, kind of have the correct forms and everything. Um, oh, yeah, I, I shouldn't uh, hide my Discord, shouldn't I? Let's do... Um, let me get the old invite code for the Discord. Come on, let's do that. I need to set up my... Uh, <laughs> I'm slacking. I need to set up all my um, channel deals. Let's do this. Come on, Discord. No, everyone's invited now. We're all family. We are all family. I think Discord's like updating. <laughs> of course. Oh, wait. No, it should be coming up. I'll get the invite code, and I'm actually going to post it here in chat. So if you want the... Um, I mean, you guys are all family. Normally, I mean, technically, this is like the, the, the Patreon exclusive board. And I have some mods and stuff from back in the day. But hey, you guys are all family, so you're joining. You're joining. You can chat. You can see art as it's being made. You can chat about video games, all kinds of stuff, man. Super fun. I'm on it kind of every day. I have it on my phone. Um, what has happened with Discord? Discord, what are you doing?
I'm gonna reopen it real quick. And then I'll get I'll get you guys that link. Hold on. Cause I like talking with you guys. I like hanging out. It's fun. Kind of a hybrid joint. Yeah. Oh, Discord has an update. That's why. That's why it's taking a minute. Okay, we'll hop back in here. Uh, just remind me. Give me that Discord link whenever that comes back up. So really, we got we got this setting up right here. And see, and something to keep in mind, we've worked, what, maybe three hours, four hours on this thing. These pieces for Games Workshop take weeks. And that's legitimate. Like... Two of mine probably broke the 50-hour mark. The ones that are coming out for uh, Forsaken Systems. I mean, they're the, they're the tightest work I've ever done. I'll put it that way. Like, which is nice. I'm just, when, when it comes to my person, I don't work that tight because I just have too many ideas and I want to just paint. But for clients like Varia and... Uh, Cubicle 7 and you know Games Workshop and that type of stuff and like uh, Warner Brothers when they wanted the uh... it's funny the Warner Brothers the Mad Max stuff I did it's very loose but it's a tight version of very loose which is funny because you need a likeness I mean you're you're able to paint like Charlize Theron and freaking Tom Hardy so it better look like those two people you know what I mean but they still wanted it painterly they wanted it splotchy so it was fun it was a fun exercise Starting. But yeah, this is basically just giving us some good info. Um, and then what we can do. I wonder if. Yeah. So this can be kind of the. Uh, this can be the light structure because we already have the clouds coming in this kind of horizontal or not horizontal uh what am i trying to say diagonal i know words um diagonal way so we can kind of mimic this and see where it takes us yeah art takes a long time man it really does and like my favorite parts my favorite parts are coming up with the idea like brainstorming with a client or whatever like that's so much fun because there's so much electricity getting some basic sketches down is cool because then you're figuring it out this type of part right here we're about to get to work like this is the work part where it's kind of ugly still not, nothing's quite refined but then once you pass the ugly painting phase it really starts taking off and every painting has an ugly painting phase every single one I've never had a piece of art that looked great all the way through. It just doesn't happen that way. It's like you have to have the ingredients before you have the mix, you know? <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> as it is. Just done. Perfect. Look at that sword. Look at that hilt. The masterful craftsmanship. <laughs> like a weird. Kind of looks like a peen a little bit. Um, let me get. The invite code. So, guys, be sure, be sure to join up our Discord, man. Go for it. I'd love to see you. Love to see you. <laughs> see, and like, it's all art, man. Like, this could be anything you want, man. <laughs> I need to tell you guys about art school. That just <laughs> that just reminded me of art school back in the day. I'm not going to talk about where I went to art school cuz the school itself is fine. The problem with art school is art school students. Not even the instructors. The instructors have seen it all. So whenever you go to art school, there's this thing about, "Oh, I'm an artist, man. You can't tell me what to do, bro." I'm the best. No one's seen anything like I've done. And then 
maybe for the first semester and a half, you can get away with that. But then once you're like junior, senior level, you're like, can you paint the apple or not? Like, what are you talking about? Just pay, look, look at the thing and paint it. Is it there? Uh, <laughs> but Mo's already, <laughs> Mo gets the double whammy it. Mo gets the join again, which is great. <laughs> But yeah, art art school students are the worst. And I can say that because I was one. And I was like, well, what does that color green really mean? Like, what does it mean? It means it's green is what it means. For God's sake. Anyway. Um, let's start let's start digging in. So we're gonna select all edit copy merged yet again. Edit paste. And we are going to get our old pal, the hard round opacity, and we're just going to start going for it, okay? We're going to start gun first, and this jumbled mess that kind of looks like a hand holding it, we have to, uh, we have to make that happen. Okay, so we got this, here's this one. So we got great reference, which means I better not, um, doesn't that, yeah, doesn't take, sir, I need to feed my family. All I have is this exposure. Yeah. If, if someone wants to pay, it, it, here's, I will say my, I lucked out. I kind of got my social media presence because I got featured by Halo. Right? I did some Halo fan art and they liked it enough that thankfully they put it on their community spotlight. And they did it three times. I did, I did three posts, and then I was like, okay, can I keep this going? Um, and then if people started coming to me about exposure, like, oh, well, you know, no, I think it'd be good. It'd be good exposure. I'm like, you're telling me you have a bigger reach than 343 Industries and Halo. Because that's who I get featured by, man. Like, like not the toot the own horn or whatever, but, like, they featured my stuff. It got like 48,000 likes. Can you guarantee me 48,000 likes? Then we'll talk. Ooh, then I never hear back from them. It's a great way to be like, shove off, you know. But any aspiring artist out there, if you're, if you're an artist wanting to go pro, do not, do not work for free. I would see don't even work for spec. So spec is like, spec is like we have this uh, project, you know, if it takes off, you'll get part of this thing, but we need to show it to investors. Uh, I, I would only do that if you really, one, if you have no expectations, if it doesn't matter or not, if the thing succeeds. But then the only other time is if it's like a good family friend and you have faith in them, and you think they can pull this off, then go for it. Because then, you know, if they have the perseverance and it's their love and their passion project, go for it. Give it a fair shake. Do not expect it to succeed. All right? Just don't. Um, that's why I've been very fortunate in being able to work with the clients that I've had because they have reputations. They have, I mean, you know, when... Guildhouse Games comes to you, or, you know, freaking Cubicle 7 or Games Workshop or whatever. It's like, oh, yeah, I know of these people. <laughs> like, they, they, have, they have paid their dues, and, and they're a trusted entity. I put that magazine way up front, didn't I? Oh, man, now I got to figure this out. Oh, this is not where I want to be. <laughs> All right, you're gonna make me, you're gonna make me paint an arm and a hand. Okay. Thank y'all. Tootsie rolls, thank you. Oh, so good. I think, <laughs> I don't know how good this would be anymore, but I think we still have Halloween candy. And I think we have Tootsie rolls. Tootsie Roll Pops. Ooh, see, Tootsie Roll Pops are the ones. Just put a banner on there. Oh, dude, that's a dope idea. Just whatever. 
I'm gonna put a servo skull right in front of his hand. Just right there. I can paint skulls all day. I'll just put it right there and he's like, Meh -heh -heh. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and see from way, uh, I, I do think I know who it is. I do think I know who, who Nunchi is. I believe I do. Does the, does the, the, does, do the words Pond Creek Hunter Panthers mean anything to you? roll pop fiend fiendin hmm hmm <laughs> interesting Yeah, uh, and the other one I was gonna say, does new adorable wiener dog puppy mean anything to you? So I like the like grip, like the hand grip on these, uh, I like that setup. And then we can also do kind of that orangey, goldy, dark, slightly more. Something like that. Maybe so. Perhaps. Mayhaps. You kind of block that in like so. Tomorrow, oh man. A freaking adorable. I saw the pictures and I was like, now I want no, another puppy. We got, we got Stella who's asleep right now, but she ain't no puppy no more, man. She's gonna be six. Yeah, but you know, a little, a little fun, uh, half Chihuahua, half Terrier mix. So that actually comes down front. Then we got... More like that. And I'm gonna come back and put like texture on the on this, um, I might hit it a little bit with a slightly more saturated orange, just to kind of bring out a little bit of that gold-esque finish. Because that way, whenever you kind of zoom out, now it has that slight believability. It seems a little aggressive, though. Um, 
but really this is just part two in blocking blocking in this stuff because i would like to push this enough to a finish that i could sell prints like that would be that'd be cool um however i need to re-review the games workshop stuff because I don't know if you can sell custom fan prints of... I mean, you probably could, but also don't want to get on their bad side. Because I like working for them. You know what I mean? I, I would rather get money by working for them rather than getting money from fan art prints. I'll put it that way. I want to see my stuff in Warhammer books. <laughs> you know? Uh, but what's cool is, like, I, I was actually discussing maybe picking up some cool uh starcraft art that's why i kind of did that zerg sketch earlier today because that'd be fun learn how to do some of that stuff work in that wheelhouse which is related i mean uh, starcraft and warhammer have a history it's not very lovely it's kind of a tumultuous relationship but you know it is what it is Now, I will say one of my favorite parts about working with guns and things like that is what are considered greebles. So greebles, um, you can also call them like odds and ends, nooks and crannies, that type of stuff. What a greeble is, is just detail for detail's sake. It's just information. Put noise on it, and then people will think it looks really detailed, even if it doesn't. Um... So like, I can just add like little dots and things like that, um, kind of come over here. But then whenever we zoom out, it's almost like a magic trick happens because now there's all this detail all of a sudden, even though nothing we added serves any function, it's just, uh, just information for information's sake, you know? So if we had that, and then like, uh, like rust texture is a good idea of a greeble. It's just a thing that it's there. It helps. It's not necessary, but it works. And then like, yeah, so we could even come in here and like, let's say I wanted to put a kill count on this gun. Um, <laughs> yeah, doctors hate it. Art directors hate it. Actually, art directors love it. <laughs> so it is art hack um because they're like wow look how detailed that is and it's like i spent maybe five minutes scribbling on things but let's say we wanted a kill count on this gun like if i came in here with a slightly lighter color and did like one two three four five six that's a piece of storytelling so like as you know if if you're looking this is a this is at 100%, let's see, about 105%, let me move this out of the way. So it doesn't really look like anything, right? But if you look at that gun, that gun looks way sharper than everything else on the piece. And you're like, oh, look at that, what is that? Oh, is that, are those marks? What is that? Like, it, it forces people to hold it close, you know. Um, I think that's pretty rad. It's easy to do, too. Like, a lot of people worry a lot about, oh, the devil's in the details. They're going to notice those details. Very, very rarely, unless it's required for a client, do I go in and really hard render details? I just don't do it. Um, that's partly why I love art history so much, is you had guys like, you know, John Singer Sargent, Anders Zorn... Uh, Ed, uh, yo, uh, oh, Dega, Edgar Dega, what's his first name? Edgar, yeah. Um, so Dega, you have uh, Caravaggio was very he was detail oriented, but still he would fool the eye. He would do impressionism or like figurativism and stuff like that. Uh, yes, yeah, Sar Sergeant was so good. Sergeant was so good. His greebles, his added information, 
was the texture of the brush stroke. And I'm still, my, my mind, I can't comprehend it. I have like six Sargent art books that I open and look at, but he was so ahead of the curve. He was like, how about that tree bark looks like tree bark because the paint that I use is thick enough to look like tree bark. And I'm like, brother, you're working on like some 40 chess. Like, what are you doing? It's insane. So, in fact, <laughs> let's, let's take a gander. Let's let's bring up some sergeant. Now you got me thinking about it. I'll show you my favorite sergeant piece, um, singer sergeant. Because what we can do now is we can use some of this impressionism stuff um, and like realism at the very end. God, it's ridiculous. Lady Agnew. Lady Agnew is the one to go for because freaking ridiculous. Uh, let me find a very high quality one. Lady Agnew, a um, high definition. Um, Lady Agnew of Lochna. Not the... Kinda. That doesn't show it off super well, though. Because it looks really... It looks like whenever they brought it up, they smoothed it out. Let me do Anders Zorn. Both of those guys are just genius at it. Anders Zorn. God, so freaking good. I'm like, I'm angry. I, I get so enamored with it. Oh yeah, of course. Thank you for thank you for coming. Thank you so much. It's great to talk to you and give give puppy uh good pets. But look at this. Alright. So like Ander Zorn is a demon. He's an absolute fiend when it comes to painting. Because He's like, oh, the texture for the color? Why don't I just do the brush stroke and let that be the texture for the color? Oh, this hair? Yeah, why I, Why don't I not render it and just put two different values of paint on the brush at the same time and swoop it and see what happens? Yo, Cad, what's up, my man? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Turner would lose his mind. Um, As would Lion Decker. Lion Decker would go, it's a different type of art, but that dude would go nuts. He would be digital through and through now. No question in my mind. Um, but like, look at this. So the texture in here, texture in the face. If you look at it up close, like a thing that I, I learned, I mentored under a few people and I told them I really wanted the Zorn Sergeant look. And like, this is a finished piece that is sold for, you know, very much six figure type stuff by Andrew Zorn. If this was your painting, and he, they were asking me, they were like, zoom in. If this was your painting, would you leave it alone? Or would you push it more? Because the beauty of Zorn and Sargent is they didn't over render, they didn't overdo it. But the, so here it look it looks ugly, like ugly painting. That's the term for it. But then you zoom out. That's perfect. It's like there are no faults with this painting. <laughs> like it, it is actually a perfect painting because you get some beautiful looks like these blends and stuff. But he doesn't work it. it it's he puts so much effort into this being effortless. I can't, I can't believe it. Like I, I will spend the rest of my life studying Andrew Zorn, studying John Singer Sargent. 
I don't get it. Like, I try my best. <laughs> but they are on such another level. I can't believe it. Like, I just, I don't, like, what, how do you, I don't know. Hmm. Unreal. Unreal. I'm just going to keep this one here. It has nothing to do with the painting that we're doing right now. I just, I, <laughs> I just want a Zorn painting up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Oh, man. That secret sauce. That's what it is. Yes, and the, the old art masters did that on purpose because I, I can't remember if it was Sargent. I think Sargent said paintings are meant to be seen, not smelled, which means stand back nine feet. Stand back the way you would in a museum, and it's going to look photorealistic. If you come up and look super close at it, it looks like, you know, nothing. It looks literally bad. It's so tough because now the... The uh, the bar keeps getting raised in digital art. And like, as much as I would like to consider myself a professional, I will always be a student of the game. Always. And I'm following a lot of Magic the Gathering artists. You, of course, that's a dream gig. But the reason why I follow them, they are pushing boundaries. They are absolutely the future of not only like fantasy painting or like painting for games or concept art or whatever, but like I view those artists like Randy Vargas, uh, uh, McNally, uh, you know, Paul Canavan. Um, he's actually streaming right now. Um, they are setting the stage for like the arts. I'm I'm convinced that they will be the people that we look to in art books in 50 years and be like, oh, this was modern art. This was contemporary fine art, but it was made for games. It was made for uh, card games. They're just, they're, they're on another level. And I get the same feeling whenever I see great stuff like that that I do whenever I look at a Sergeant or a Zorn. You know what I mean? Like, I get that same sort of like, oh my gosh, these people are on another level. And it's my goal to get to that point, you know? Uh, it takes time. Um, yeah. And Picasso is someone that gets a bad rap. I'm a big fan of Picasso. Not his uh, later life stuff, but his early, like, let me figure out how to paint stuff is genius. You look at it and you're like, man, this guy, no matter what he did, he was talented, you know. But a lot of art snobs, oh, Picasso's overrated. It's like, nah, I don't think he is. <laughs> I think he's rated exactly where he needs to be, you know. Uh, but like I said, I'm I'm very much a student of... the game. I like to know what came before me. I like to know what's going to happen in the future. Even though you can never predict the future, you can kind of see where art is headed. Um, I think we're actually going back to more of the impressionistic era, more of that figurative realism. Um, that seems to be the thing. And it's really... There we go. Yeah, see, now we're adding some light up here. Ooh, buddy. This is rendering. We're in the thick of it now, boys and girls. We're going for it. So, like, if we zoom out now, see, yeah, now that, that nice little hit of light right there just gave enough form. Oh, that's, I'm jealous of that. And to see, and that's the thing, we can, we can talk about digital art, we can talk about uh, even looking at Zorn paintings and stuff on a computer monitor all day. If you go and you look at them in person, it's a completely different experience. Like, you know, <laughs> art museums might seem like a really boring place, but if you're at all interested in that stuff and like how the eye works and visual design and things, 
seeing those old masters and seeing their actual real stuff is unbelievable. It's, because uh, the thing I noticed, I, I have not seen, who did I see in person? Uh, it was somebody that was very much a kind of a contemporary of um, the, the sergeant and Zorn. So they had the same style. What surprised me is how dark the painting is. There's not a lot of brights. There's not a lot of... Um, it, it's one of those things that it looks perfect in a dimly lit room. But if you have a super bright, saturated room, you can hardly see anything. You're looking at it and you're like, wow, that's really dark. Like, I don't know if something happened. But then you dim the lights to where the lights aren't overbearing. And it's perfect. It looks photorealistic. It's amazing. Um... But that's just, you You get that from having experience and knowing, you know. Okay, let's bring this down. So we got our bolter. It's looking good. Here, let me save this. So yeah, we got another 45 minutes. I don't know, maybe an hour-ish in our stream. So yeah, we're definitely not gonna finish today, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I think next time I stream is going to be next Wednesday. Uh, so I have my daughter all this weekend and uh, it's MLK day, so it's an extended weekend. However, I will be posting art um, all of the days. I'll be sketching on the iPad. I'll be doing some stuff. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to save this just to be our pet project for the stream. You know what I mean? Like, so wherever we get today, great. Um, we're definitely not going to finish, but I think we're going to get pretty decent ways now. I can really kind of dig in and start rendering this. Um, and then we can we can get to a decent spot. So we got that. Okay. I see. So here's what I mean about picking colors now that we put these color bounces on here. We can pick this and have this be our render colors. And then we can, of course, go and adjust them later, uh, things like that. But for right now, and then if I want to lighten this, like it's catching that light. Same thing here. I'm gonna... Does that come up and then that goes to a little like a almost like a socket type deal right and then that would be yeah something like that same thing over here we do this it's a little tall so we'll cut that bam and see and as you zoom out it looks more and more rendered um carnival's right around town oh yeah find a print of huh that's cool some of those artists from back in the day man genius like they they had such a good understanding of the world that they could just, they could make it all happen, you know? See, okay, so now we have this brighter kind of color right here. 
So we have some purples and stuff. We're kind of going to get rid of these neon -y purples. It's just nice to have them here just as a, a placeholder. But really what we're going to do to make sure this light gets hit well, because if you if we once again come back over here, something that's kind of a staple for Games Workshop art is very bright highlights, blown out, overexposed, incredibly shiny, you know, even the cloth stuff, you get super bright. Um, thank you, Mo. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I, I think, yeah, we're going to kind of, the way we're rendering now is we're sort of like brushing, but we're going down. So we're going to render each thing as it comes up. Then we're going to do another pass of it. Then we're probably going to zoom out um, and then adjust the lighting and stuff like that. So... Mario Fortuny. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, holy crap. So, yeah, he, uh, <laughs> God dang. Is that watercolor? Wait, hold on. This guy's a madman. That's cool. Unfreaking believable, guys. Check this one out. What? Do you know how long that took him? <laughs> I just see this. I'm like, do you know how much time that took? Oh. Yeah, that's like ink almost. That that has to be watercolor. Like that's incredible. Exhibition. Now I'm reading up on him. See what's nice is uh oh, yeah. So, here's a good if you guys want to kind of read up god oh and he does the little pencil sketch line art stuff yeah it looks like he does a little bit of either gouache or uh prado that man most renown and oil painting is precise colorful as a new interpretation of the natural world, uh, notably influential in this respect. Watercolor, okay, yes. Which made him the preeminent practitioner of the artistic discipline in his day. That makes sense. Because watercolor, hell no. I am I love impressionism and I love letting th the chips fall where they may as much as the next person. I cannot control watercolor. Can't do it. You're telling me to be a waterbender? No way. Ain't happening. <laughs> Ain't happening. Acrylics, fine. They dry fast, sure. Gouache, fine. They're a little thicker. You can move them. Watercolor, no way. So let's bring this back up. Where were we at? We were... We were right here, weren't we? Yep. Cool. Come back here. We're going to blow this out. So we're going to take that, since that is kind of the greenish color, we're going to add a little bit of green, but then we're going to brighten it a lot. Because whenever we come and hit right here, it's going to be a nice, we can even temper this over to the yellow, because we do have that kind of darker brown yellow in the, in the folds. We're gonna do this. We're kind of gonna desaturate that a little bit to bring in that. Then we're gonna actually up the saturation and darken for the actual folds. So that's just gonna give us a little bit of interest. Oh, 
Well, that's actually a good point. I never thought about the water being... Yeah, it didn't have fluoride and all that crap in it. Yeah. Holy God. Etching? Burnisher on paper. I beg your pardon, Mario. Come on, let me... This is a full resolution preview. Oh, that's wood etching. That's act. Oh my god. I have a wood etching uh, digital brush. <laughs> I can't do that with it. No way, man. That is on another freaking level. Um, something I am gonna do for this face. One of my favorite artists. One of my favorite digital artists is uh. Li Shin Yin. He's actually someone I've gotten a little bit of advice from. Not a lot. I'm not saying we're like best bros or anything. But I want to show you this guy. Because this is definitely the type of vibe I want to get. Um, so Li Shin is incredible. He has that very traditional... Like he's doing uh, art for the newest Dune film guy's a master like genuinely he's a master so he's been doing hard round uh portrait stuff so all he's doing is a 100 percent opacity hard round brush and then just making stuff like this which is it makes me want to weep dude's unbelievable um see what i mean you look back at it it's perfect but then you look up close and you can see every single brush stroke that he makes. He did a series of these on Assassin's Creed. Here we go. Which are ungodly gorgeous. We are going to use some of these as inspiration to light the, the face of our Dark Angel. Because I love that there's no eyes. He, he did that on all of them. So, dude, he's absurd, absolutely ridiculous. Um, and these are his sketches. He's like, I had, I had a spare 20 minutes. Like, what? You 20, what? Absurd. He's crazy. He's a madman. Yeah, he's nuts. He's absolutely insane. So we're going to find... Oh. It does have full helm as an option. See, I was thinking... If we could get away with this type of lighting... A mix of like Rembrandt light with a... Uh, insane shadow... Which way is his face facing? Because if we have like a... We have that. The light catches there. Of course, we're going to come in and actually add real light here momentarily, but... Oh, what angle is his face? See, these. this is going to be like the hardest part of the piece. Is finding the good lighting structure. And like, we have... So... Space Marines are beefy boys, man. They got big ol' ass square Brock Lesnar heads. I mean, they're mutants. I mean, they're, they are mutants. They, they, they are genetically altered to be super soldiers, and they stand like, what, 14 feet tall? It's ridiculous. 
Um, so getting that appearance of a rugged bad dude. Um, tricky. And then right here because you can see how many different subtle shades he uses <laughs> where one of the regular humans is yes yeah yeah yeah. i literally uh read that chapter a few it's one of the uh journalists um whenever they go to oh what planet is it where they do the siege right before jabal turns sorry spoilers um yeah they're like, it, yes, because it's the three that talk about, hey, they're not showing us any action. They're showing us this, like, codified version of the war, but we know some real stuff's going on. Let's break out of here. It's those guys. And they're like, these guys are monsters. <laughs> Which is true, man. Um, ooh, yeah. True story, I read the Jubal turning scene right before I went to bed, and I had a nightmare that night. Not even freaking, like, Lovecraft, n none of that type of stuff ever did that. But good on, who was it, Dan Abnett? To get just the right mixture of words to make it happen. Yeah, oh, dude. The whole salmon. Oh, such a good scene. And like, that's the first time it ever happened. Like, brother has never turned against brother. Oh man, they, he wrote that so well. That whole hyped up thing to where even these badasses that come in and can take out like entire platoons, once that happens one time, they're like, okay, nothing is sacred anymore. And I'm like, oh yeah, boy, we're getting in it, getting in the thickness. If you guys have not read Warhammer books, do so because they're rad. They're really cool. <laughs> that's that's my pro tip for the day, by the way. And some people were telling me not to read Horus Heresy because like, oh no, it comes that that stuff is happening before 40k. It's like I know, but I gotta know. I gotta know what's going on. You know. So this hood lighting doesn't really make any sense, but that's fine. What we actually need. Like, I think adding greebles to this face are going to be really nice because you can add the scars and the, you know. You know, the. He's amazing. I have, like, a weird mixture of Horace Heresy books. We have an awesome used bookstore here in. Um, here in Waco to where they have shelves beyond shelves of old just Warhammer stuff. And I'm talking like even the miniature like promo magazines back from the 80s and the 90s and Mythy, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing well this fine January 15th. Um They have some really cool stuff. Like, I got some old codexes that way. Um, I even got... Let me show you this beefy boy real quick. I'll come to... Oh, wait. Which one? Which one? On oh, life scene. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Oh, this bad boy. From whatever edition. The big-ass... Uh, collection that comes with the mini book the lore book and uh the rule book the min the mini catalog and the uh art book like it's an awesome set got it for like 12 bucks <laughs> i lucked out forever thank you i i do apologize because 
once I get talking, I like don't paint as much. <laughs> but I hope it helps, you know. Um, just try to keep it lively. But I appreciate you joining. Thank you so much. Do I like actual face on this duder? I think really what it is is I don't like the hood. Good news is we have all these Li Xin Yin things where he paints some rad hoods. They're not at the angle. Cause see, this is this is more kind of the look, I guess, right? So instead of it, cause I was basing the hood off the model. But well, I guess even that kind of comes forward a little bit into a into a point. No no fear. I think I have no no fear. Hold on. No, I don't think I do. I think I need to pick that one up, but I have like Mark of Kalth, uh, Thousand Sons, First Heretic. Prospero Burns, Shadows of Treachery, Tales of Heresy, which is a short story collection, Betrayer, I have Horus Rising on the shelf, um, I'm actually reading that on Kindle right now, but yeah, like, I have random assortments, because I see them, and then I check, like, is this one of the good ones on Reddit and stuff, and then the ones that they say yes, I usually pick them up, but yeah, No No Fear, I think, is one of those that comes up a lot. So if that catches, I wonder if... <laughs> now this is almost going to look like uh, the character from... Oh, uh... What the hell is the name of that franchise? Dude, uh, War... Um... The Zelda clone thing? What is the... I literally have all of the games. And I have the remasters. Darksiders! <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? I kept thinking death, death, death. But that's who you play as. Um, so this this uh, reminds me of... Let's see. Uh... Or it's not. Wait, hold on. Now, 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 I gotta open up my old uh, Steam library because I'm a freak. See, and I also need to make this hood look not like hair. I think that's a very important thing to do as well. Because that's silly. Let's see. See, his nose is kind of gumpy shape and then he has the smile but that face does not look good what a weird ass angle for a face Yeah, so this is actually, um, this is a Warhammer character, and this Warhammer's character name 
is the what is it prime lieutenant um zachariah let me let me look this up google.com so yes this is an actual miniature that you can buy from games workshop for the game warhammer um 40k um warhammer 40k zach real then yeah yeah that's him right games workshop oh yeah so if I go to dark angels and look him up yeah there he is okay there you go. Dark Angels Primaris Lieutenant Zachariah. So yeah, you can order him. He's a he's a real uh real duder. I even love the grittiness of the boxes and stuff. Just the whole thing's great. And see what's super nice, this is a mwah that Games Workshop does. They give you the actual Citadel paint colors to paint the mini, but what your boy does to make sure that the colors match, and I'll actually do this right now while I'm thinking about it. Huh, I almost showed a behind the scenes thing of a Varya card. <laughs> so we've got the snipping tool right here. We're gonna copy that. We can put it on our reference board and then we'll have the exact colors we need. Or in fact, we want to do one better, we can actually open up an, oh, not open. We can, uh, since we have that copied to the clipboard, we'll hit new. And then it's going to make the exact dimensions of what we have copied to the clipboard, edit, paste. Now we have our colors. Um, so we have the gold, we have the gun metal right there, we have black. So if we want this to legitimately be like GW approved down to the pixel, now we have our color swatches right here. Um, and you'll notice that there's kind of that dark brown. We can push this a little bit. So what we can actually do is use these dark browns as that background um, to kind of frame. If we do this, uh, let's arrange this as two up vertical yes okay so now we have kind of our colors that we can work with so let's say we had this kind of reddish color and then I'm gonna come back here I'm gonna get like a cloud brush of mine brush pack 2020 okay Got this so I'm gonna come in here and I'm actually gonna add clouds but see that's a little too saturated that's a little uh, it's a little too red it's a brown but it's a little too red so what we can do is we can take that that saturated red bring that down closer to gray make it a little darker also push this more towards those purples like we talked about now you start getting that dark purple look. And then of course you can always pull that color since we have that here on its own separate layer. You can always pull that back by either putting down that opacity, which kind of adds some cool like variances or you can black and white layer. Where are we? Oh, yeah, filter, black and white filter, and then just set it to, uh, wait, where is it at? Black and white. And yeah, we can do it for the whole picture to check our values, but if you just want it black and white on those clouds, hit this little button right here, make some clipping masks to the layer below it, then you just have control over those clouds. So since there was a lot of red in there, I bet the blue and the cyan will do some stuff. Well, a little bit. 
Yeah, they're primarily red, I guess. Oh, they have the magentas, of course. So yeah, we can kind of rock out those magentas. Then we can kind of bring in the reds a little bit. But see how it's still black and white? Then what you do, then you mask this. So now I'm on my mask layer with a black brush. And then I'll paint where I want that red to kind of peek through those original colors. This is usually a finishing step. This is usually something I do for the last like hour or so before a piece is done to really hone in on where I want my focal points to be. And what's nice about a mask is then all you gotta do, say so you're in black and white since you're on the mask layer right here. So I'm gonna hit the X button and it flips whether I'm in black or white. And white, if I paint over it again, it erases it. But the info's still there, information's still there, so it's not really an eraser. Um, but yeah, so I think we're gonna come back later and do that. Um, I don't think we need the clouds up right now because that's not where our focus is. Um, really, we're gonna render our guy, and then after we're done, we're gonna find the best way to use the clouds to render him better, um, to kind of really match that Games Workshop look. Bam. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, oh, always learn. Always be a student. I'm always a student forever and ever. Like, if art was a martial art, I would always be a white belt. I would never, ever want to be promoted above a white belt. Because I don't know enough. You know what I mean? Like... It's one of those Dunning-Kruger things. Once you, once you feel like you know a little bit, that just shows how much you don't know. That's that's how art it is. The more you learn, the more you know. You still have to learn. Um, but that that's the good thing about going and you know improving and just pushing yourself to the limit. So we have Duda right here. Let's just we can ape this. <laughs> and I might actually go ahead and uh, <laughs> I might. I don't know if the face is working. I know. I won't get better if I don't do it, but I want it to look rad and I'm impatient and I'm not getting paid for this one. So like we could just make let's make our boy right here, you know, so let me flip that horizontal. That way I can kind of get a well, actually, yeah, the face looks better like that. So let's come in. Let's do this. I'm ashamed. Shame. Let's do softer tail brush. Yeah. So we'll just come in here. We will block this same color green that we have here. Kind of in this. Do not be afraid to kill your darlings. Do not be afraid to try stuff. That's the only way you get better and you learn new things. So since he is, that looks actually pretty dope. Putting like a green mask over him, it doesn't make sense, but like that's, that's kind of cool. Um, but no, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and continue on. Um, just try new stuff, you know, just get out of your own way, get out of your comfort zone. As I say, as I completely hide a face that's being butchered. Um, do as I say, not as I do. So this is the air ventilation right here. Let's see, his face is facing. No, I don't like it that high. Um, this would be like down here almost. Like that. I don't know about all that. Yeah, I guess his helmet could... Uh, could it come over the collar? Maybe. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just draw stuff. So if that's going to be here...
he looks upset. <laughs> I can just say that for every character in Warhammer. He looks angry. What you got to be angry about, bro? Ugh. Just be no, that's fine. Um, does the model have what he would wear? Oh, it does have what he would wear. Okay. Oh, nope. Really, I gotta do the old, uh, Here, if we really want to be lazy, you know what we could do? Edit, paste. Yeah, man. We can... We can do all the tricks. We can photo bash it. Like a champion. Cheating. He's cheating. I synced it. Um... By the way, uh, people just getting into art and digital art, photo bashing is fine. It is absolutely fine. Don't think you're less of an artist for doing it. All of your heroes do it. I guarantee you, any art that you've ever seen in a video game in the past 15 years has absolutely been based on photo reference. Guaranteed. All that dope stuff you see in Assassin's Creed, Mwah! Painted over. All of it. Last of Us? Mwah! Photo bash. Every last bit of it. Do what you gotta do to get your shit done. That's what I say. So what we can actually do now is, uh... And like... And it sounds bad, but anybody that tries to call out people for like photo bashing and stuff I can immediately tell they don't have a job in the industry I can immediately tell because like yeah this is all well and good oh shit <laughs> I actually uh, <laughs> I actually really like that look at that look at this you see that now I ain't got to do nothing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, see what happens when you use photo ref, though? Whenever you start photo bashing, it just works. It just works. That's what I'm talking about, children. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Here, let me move this. That's like, oh, that, okay, come on. That's like fate. It, it can become a crutch, that's absolutely true. Uh, because if you ever get a client that li literally is like, can you make this thing, but also make it upside down and inverted and from a different, uh, different hemisphere and like, can you, once you start getting so deep in the weeds, you just, like, like, I, like I've said, if you can't draw a box in perspective, maybe work on the fundamentals and I still have to work on fundamentals hell I couldn't draw a face you know the way I wanted um, so then I chickened out and came to the photo bash side but like it, it, it's a thing for a reason um, if it's good enough for Craig Mullins um, oh yeah you don't Greg land it but the godfather of digital art, Craig Mullins, that's all he does. I mean, he knows how to paint like a god anyway. But people were talking all this smack, and then <laughs> Craig Mullins comes out and he's like, he's like, oh no, I photo bash all the time. He was like, that's the only way I paint now is I photo bash. And then all of a sudden it was acceptable because like Big Daddy Mullins said it was okay, which is fine. It's like, whatever. Um, but yeah, so what you do is you have the reference work for you. Um, you, you have it to where, uh, but see, this also shows we got to this organically, right? We got to where we're at organically. And then if you look at this, it's almost a dead ringer. 
Like, look at that. Like, we, we got to this organically, and it already exists. So people could, even if I worked my ass off rendering out this right now and making it look realistic, even without this reference, and I referenced it out, someone would look online and be like, oh, he just took this and... Even if I've never seen this in my life. It, it, it just goes to show there's no original ideas. It just doesn't work that way. Learn a lot of anatomy, it does help. Yes, from photos, yes. Well, and also, we don't live in the Renaissance era anymore. We can't be like, can you sit for me for 16 hours while I paint you and learn about light hitting the human form? No, take pictures. Take pictures, and then paint. Best way to get better at painting is to paint. You know. But yeah, Greg Land is so shameless, but dude still gets work. As much as I hate it, as much as I say no, no, wag the finger, like he, he's he's not doing he's not doing the real deal. Guess who keeps hiring him? He's still one of the most prolific artists in the world, which goes to show. Client doesn't care, not at all. You know what we're gonna do? We are going to, oh, what? let me do this. We are actually going to keep this and I'm gonna, thank you, brother. Oh yeah. Thank you, Marco. Dude, congrats on on, on the, the Nerd in the Bay expansion that's going down. Congrats on that, man. That's huge. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to use this essentially as a crutch. That's what we're going to do. What that means is we are going to use this to structure our hood around. So if we have this, and then we want... that sort of look. Let's get rid of this. So if that comes this way and then out, and then this comes over here. See, and this is where the fundamentals come into play because like, find the line, find the perspective and then use it to your advantage. Because that is how this stuff works. And then that, those shadows are hitting because that's draping across. We can even kind of pull that back a little bit. I actually want to bring this up a little. <laughs> what angle do I want it? So if it's going to sit right here and like puff out, you know, thank you, Mithy. Thank you so much. So really, this is about you gotta know your fundamentals, you gotta know the directions, you gotta know what's gonna happen if light is obstructed, but you can still freaking photo bash. It's fine. It is totally fine. And how funny that even the drapery right here, we can, these lines almost line up. Like it just, you know what I mean? Like you can come over here and then whenever we connect these, And then that kind of hits right here. We 
We can darken this. <laughs> now the arm looks way out of whack, but that's fine. You know what? We'll allow it. We will, oh, we will allow it. Same thing here. Extend this down. And I know this torso actually needs to be kind of elongated. Because on the model, that's probably where the belt is sitting. But we need his torso to be bigger. So once again, we can use color picking and all that stuff to kind of get this form where it needs to be. Because then whenever we come back here, And that's whenever we can get this kind of shadow color, kind of reshade based on where our uh, light source is hitting and things like that. Because this is not lit the same way that a model would be lit in a studio. And see, we can actually take that color to make our lighter. Almost looks like a peasant hood from like oblivion. <laughs> yeah, it's a little puffed out. I want it to fall a little different, but like, you see what I mean? Like now we're, it looks like it's a little too over the head, but not like, cause see how we have these two references we have like this draping across and then uh, oh, and then like here where the face is almost completely obscured. Um, yeah, same here. Like you can see kind of a little bit of the nose, a little bit of the lighting. Fabric is tricky. Um, fabric is one of those things that there, there's different types of fabric folds. There's pinching folds, like if you were to pinch something and hold it up, like, let me. So it all depends, like, th like this shirt is draping, like it's drapery. So what you see is you can see main points to where it has, uh, where it's like holding on, and then it kind of lets loose, but around the points where it's hitting, it does that. It's the same thing as pinching. So like whenever you pinch and do this, you'll see that all the lines lead back to the pinch point and it makes like a geometric shape. Um, that's kind of what I tried to do like here a little bit. Of course, it's not rendered or let me kick back. So what I tried to do here, but I haven't gotten to that stage yet of where we're really rendering out cloth. Um, I kind of want the hood to be more of an Assassin's Creed hood rather than like a like a peasant hood or like a uh, like an old thief hood which is kind of like that like that's kind of an old thiefish hood um, and the same as the model itself where it's kind of like the old hat that you get in Oblivion um, I kind of want them to be more of the like cowl looking over so that means the shape has to follow more of oh i see what it is i see bring this 
up. Basically, this needs to point there. All this needs to be gone. That needs to be gone. This needs to... And then this... And that's the thing. Don't be afraid to do stuff like this throughout the entire piece. Because this is really where your voice comes into play. Because you're the artist. Make it work for you. You know? Don't be so hell-bent on being true to reference or something. Like, you're the artist. Like, they hired you to do it. You know what I mean? So, see, it's a little more form-fitting. I need to get the shape down, but now it's almost more like a Prince of Persia hood. Um, yeah, like, I wish I had a, almost like a, not that it's necessarily hiding his eyes, but that it's more, it's bigger and it's draped. So while it can drape this way, like out here, because it's also a tabard, this is basically, the way I picture what he's wearing is it's one giant... <laughs> so you know, like, the wrestler Taz, whenever he would come out and he would have a towel on his head? Imagine if that towel was 12 foot long. So he would not only have it draped across his head, but then it would make the vest, how it's pinched in there, and then it would come to a head on, the on like, this middle area. It would come together and drape off. Uh, so that's what's tricky is you want to have that shape of the hood. You want to also be able to tell who this is. But you also want to add a little bit of mystery. So it's like this type of thing. Like, almost like it's... See, that's a little too dark, but... uh. And then this can come almost straight out if it's pure white and like. And the light's catching kind of random spots. It's draping across there. See, it's getting closer. Like, I can kind of start to see it now. Yeah, he needs to run almost like a child in their uh, in, in their in their in their father's T-shirt. Like, that's what I'm at. <laughs> like, hey, guys. I'm on my way. Hold on. Do something like that. And then what we're doing, because those lights are wrong. Let me grab that. Come over here. Kind of block this in a little bit. And remember, we are going to have that orangey kind of portion on there. So it's important to kind of get... Get this white in here first. That way near the bottom, we can start introducing little bits. See, of that orange to start getting a little bit of the uh, that light in there. And then as we know from the model, so if we do this, kind of lighter, kind of gray, as we know from the model, Um, he has like an ornamentation uh, or uh, is it like a blessing right here that's kind of attached uh, 
like a backpack, uh, one of those little backpack toys that you put on there, like um, Japanese fashion sense. You put that little on there. So you just clip it to your belt. You show people how cool you are with your, uh... oh my God, who's the, who's the person that makes the dolphin art? Big, big, uh, God, why, I cannot think of names. Whenever we're live, I can never think of these references. Um, <laughs> that all the teenage girls had back in the day in the hearts and stuff. It's like one of those, right? But badass, because, you know, Warhammer. No, 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 um... What is the name of the brand? It's, uh... I know it's not like Mary Sue, but like it... What is the name of that freaking brand? Lisa Frank. Lisa Frank. It's like Lisa Frank stuff. That was a long time for a punchline. <laughs> that was a long, not even really worth it sort of punchline. Um, let's see, we have like this, so then we can introduce some of that green, some of this green. And now you start seeing how all this sort of fits together. Yeah, just gotta let it, gotta really earn that. Gotta really earn the, uh... <laughs> so we're gonna bring that down. Because I like where we had our break-off point. So yeah, we're always starting to take shape. Starting to take shape a little bit, you know? So if I had that, kind of that green, that turquoise, bring this in, hit it with a little bit of that light, bam. Anything here, bam. Add some of that greeble action. Just little sketchy lines, just to add a little bit of interest. So th we're, we're right in the smack middle of what I consider the ugly painting phase. This is where it's easy to kind of get discouraged because it's not where you want it to be. You can kind of see it, but there's still so much work ahead of you. This is an easy place for people to just get frustrated and call it quits. In fact, on a lot of personal projects, I do it right about this point. I'm like, I kind of got what I needed out of it, but blah, blah, blah. But in order to get better at rendering and really pushing stuff to final, I have to practice pushing stuff to final. I have to just do it. I have to get in there, got to make it happen. Um, you know... No, no if ands, or buts. You just got to go in there and do the work. Let me hit there. Nice little skull right here. And the nice thing about that is we know that these colors are right. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt these colors are right. Um, and do keep in mind, we are putting in local values right now, which means we're putting things in as the color that they are. 
So whenever you say local color or local value or something like that, usually what that means is like, what is the color of something with no outside light source interference? So like red apple, blue truck, yellow bus. That's your local color. So we would say green armor, uh, whitish beige robe. So what is the color of the thing? Whenever we go to render, full render with lighting and everything, that's when you start doing some mental math. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna be like, okay, if I have a white cloth, how does cloth let light into it? Like, how does, how, how does the light bounce off my shirt? Does it absorb some of it? Does it refract some of it? The answer is yes to both. So then you would take this cloth and start adding some, maybe some of these subtle purples for the shadow because that's your ambient light. That's the light that's coming from the sky. So as you start adding that and you do that for every single inch of the painting, like, okay, this green is shiny, so it's gonna reflect. But if green reflects purple, what does that make? It's gonna make gray. Because the middle point, if you just have the circle, if you have the color wheel, the middle point between green and purple is exactly 50% gray. Any two complementary colors, as you add that other color to it, it gets pushed further to gray. So since we're on a light, literally on a light um, purple and a dark green, we would get kind of a 50% gray, and that would be our natural highlight color. But then whenever you get to this other stuff, like you get to Okay, if this trim right here is actually a lighter green or a gold, it it changes it. It it uh it, it adds a little bit to it, so it's a slighter green cuz it's going to refract that light, a little bit lighter of a gray, and then that's when you're going to get stuff like these borders here. But this is all color stuff we're gonna remember. Um, th yeah, this is stuff we're gonna remember whenever we start rendering. That's when you start doing that math, the mental math of lighting, which is a lot of work. It takes a lot of practice to learn. I'm still learning it, but the color wheel doesn't scare me anymore, which is a good place to be. I can read it. I can tell if I need something darker or lighter or warmer or cooler, like, it's good. I've had the most leveling up in my art career after I really dedicated a few months just to learning the color wheel um, and what it means and what it entails and um, and see what we'll do is like, this is the type of thing we would do. These are the greebles for the cloth. These are the little bits of detail just to really point home what sides are facing light and what sides aren't. And the, what kind of nice thing about this, this is almost like a magic trick. As you start just adding these little bits of info, it starts looking like real cloth. And that's all it takes is just these lines and your brain fills in the gaps. So that's what's so beautiful about Andrew Zorn, John Singer Sargent, Edgar Degas, they didn't care about making it look exactly real. They just wanted to give you enough information. That way you did the work for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why it's so important to really learn how different materials work and how they interact with light. Because then you don't necessarily have to worry about painting every fold in this cloth. You can just notice how it, it's going to bunch up and then you're going to take it from there. You know what I mean? Like, it's a really cool thing. And then straighten that up, straighten this up. 
because we know that's the right crest. But then we're actually going to get that gray because I like that gray color. We're gonna come under here. We're going to draw. We're going to draw. Then we're actually going to hit up this skull with that same color that we would have this emblem in. Start tying this stuff together. save so yeah so now it's funny because we move this out of the way we zoom out now it's starting to look like different textiles different um deals now of course we're going to spend a lot more time really coming through and rendering through to make all of this really look like that stuff but for right now this gives me an idea of where we're at like okay that's coming in that's tucking in here that's coming out here that's you know draping across here so it's it's like a roadmap. Um, I always refer to it kind of as a roadmap, just because it's going to tell us where we're going. And then like, we just do this. That's a good pouch. Gonna get that right there. And also, if we got that, and that's a brown color, we want that to be lighter brown because it's catching that light. But once again, brown and purple, it's going to be kind of a lighter red, which seems like that's not true, but it is true. See that? Who knew that light red would make brown look darker? You know what I mean? So, yeah, just think of the color wheel as everything comes off of gray and you'll be fine. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the progress we made today. Um, Cause yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up here in just a minute. I gotta go get daughter from school. Um, we're, we're getting okay with the detail. You know what I mean? This is actually not facing the light, so this will be darker. I'm not gonna use black though. I'm gonna use kind of that dark, dark, dark green. And eh, let's unsaturate that a little bit. There we go. There we go. Um, kind of get that nice sphere, because basically what this is, this is a cutout sphere. It is really, really fun. I highly recommend um, if if you have a, like issue or if it's really stressful to shade, I would actually say, because I even have a hotkey for this. Um, if I hit control Y, this will automatically turn what I'm working on into grayscale. But if you notice up here on the navigator, it's still in color. So this allows me to work in quote unquote black and white, but let's say I have something, I just need this cloth to be lighter somewhere. I can just color pick this light version of the cloth and then like come down and all this other stuff. And like, oh, I need that to be a little darker on the cloth. So I'm gonna pick that cloth color kind of right here. And then I'm gonna come down here and kind of put this in. Um, so as you can see, I'm working with lights and darks, but then if I hit control Y again, I actually worked in color. So I'm pulling the color, 
But what my mind is doing is I'm correlating a color that's on my canvas with a value, which is light and dark. So if I need something lighter, I can grab a light, you know, color. But if it's in black and white, I don't think about it. I don't think about, oh God, what color is this? I actually don't care. Um, there you go. I had control T instead of control Y. But this way, everything you make is always going to have the correct colors because the same light value is the same color. Like, it's basically limiting your color palette, but keeping the light and the darks. Um, I love working in black and white. I love it. You can, you can make absolutely beautiful work in black and white. And to prove it to you, if you don't have this program, it's called Pure Ref, which stands for Pure Reference. Um, it's free, totally free. Even if you have an iPad or something like that, it, it, there's different things like this. What you can do is you can just drag and drop images from the web or copy and paste them. And you'll see here, I got a whole bunch of different pieces of art from Warhammer stuff. That way we can have reference. Um, I usually refer to this as a reference board, just a place to come to kind of see stuff. The cool thing about Pure Ref, if I right click and then go to Canvas and click Grayscale, everything is now in Grayscale. So now I can see the values. I just see how light and dark something is. That way if I need to render shapes, like how do they render that? Oh, it's lighter on the very edge and then it curves around. They have that terminator line, which is where there's no light. And then the other bounce light starts on the other ring for the cylinder. Okay. But then what you can do is add, you know, you get that mode uh, or canvas grayscale. That's blue. And this other bounce light is orange. And if you think of it, oh, well, this side's blue, this side's orange. It gets more complicated. But if you just simplify this to your value. Oh, it's really light, a little lighter, dark, a little lighter, and then light again. Your your piece is gonna have weight to it. It's gonna have, and not only for this, but like if we were to go find um, like an actual portrait, like real life portrait stuff. And like even I can study values of Ander Zorn right here. Um. I can see the lights and the darks and uh, the beautiful blends that he gets and all the brush strokes and stuff. It's still a gorgeous painting, even if there's no color. But then whenever you come over and you see the color and how subtle it is, and you're like, oh man, that's beautiful. It just goes to show that a little color goes a long way. There's an old saying, and I learned it in art school back like 16 years ago. Value does the work, color gets the credit. All right, value does the work, color gets the credit. I would rather see an image in black and white that looked like this because I could tell there's like a virtuosity to it. Like it's, you can see the subtle shifts and like that little brush stroke, but then this brush stroke coming into that one. And like, there's so much interesting stuff to look at rather than like a super blown out, bright colored mess. It wouldn't be intriguing, at least to me. Now, some people color goes a long way. They don't care about the value so much. They just care about color and Godspeed. Like that's why art is so cool because it's subjective. Everybody has different taste. But my goal is to have interest. I want visual interest that makes you want to look at the thing and zoom way in and be like, how in the world did he do that? Now we're not at that point on our piece here yet. We will be. Um, I actually have a tutorial on my YouTube channel about the mixer brush. And the mixer brush can give you cool stuff. Actually, yeah, let's let's close, let's close. save this one out. Good stuff for today, gang. Very good stuff. Um, I'll just do this last little and see, whenever you bring that color back in, that almost looks like Skittles. It's too colorful. It's the, the, the like now that I'm looking at it again, I'm like, oh my God, I need to draw that way back. Like that's the green is fine maybe, but like this looks really good. That looks like a rainbow. The colors are too much to me now. 
Um, so, but but something that I, I've done, I'll show you some of my other stuff because we have a lot of new viewers right now. So the way I typically work is in more of a um, thick paint. Let's do that. Let's do this. Let's do Master Chief. And then mixer brush, charcoal brush, mixer brush, and then Mad Max. I'm very much a, I want you to see my physical brush strokes type person. And like, so this is what I did for Warner Brothers. If you zoom in, you can see, even on these prints, you can see every single brush stroke I did. That's what I wanted to do. But I wanted it to have the likeness of Tom Hardy, Charlie Saron, and then, of course, of Morton Joe. May he rest in peace. Um, I was able to do this for the band box. But see, you'll see the smears. You'll see the weird texture stuff. Um, and that's what I really like working with. Um, same thing here. Here, there's some thick brush work. Like... But that's what I like doing. I like this sort of like you can see each flathead brush, the oil brushes, um, the smeary stuff. Um, but then even with charcoal, I'll come and do that same thing. So you can see the lines and things like that. But then as you zoom out, it's less intricate, but it still comes together. Um, and then... This is the mixer brush demo. This is the thickest type of painting that I like to do, where you really, like, you see the repetition in the brushes, but then as you zoom out, the colors work, the values work, because once again, if I just control Y, the lights and darks work even without color. That's my goal. I want that to happen. Um, but then you add some subtle color, you know, Boom. And then it just does that li a little extra pop. Little extra pop. And then, of course, this is our first thing that ever got showcased on uh, the Halo Instagram and on their community page and all that stuff. So whenever I did this, you can see even there's like canvas textures in here. I wanted to really push that look and that feel. Um, I just love it. And like the foliage over here, it's cool grass and everything. But then if you zoom in, it's nonsense. This doesn't this is not anything. You know, but that's the type of painting that I love. I love the the ugly painting that whenever you zoom back, you're like, "Wow, that looks like a photograph." And then you come in and then you're like, "Oh crap, I can see every single brush stroke this person made." And especially like in a mask, really thick paint. I I just dig it. That's my that's my jam. Um, and then like a mountain sketch, same thing. I wanted more subtle values here. So you can see it doesn't go pure white and it doesn't go pure black. The range is a little different. It's probably about a two to eight range. If you were on a zero is bright white, 10 is black. Probably the, yeah, that to that. Um, two to eight-ish. Um, but then you can still see the brush strokes. You can see all that stuff. And then boop. Yeah, the color over top and then it just pops it right um but yeah that, that's the type of stuff i dig i like it a lot same thing with the zorn stuff let's take a look at this one more time because god zorn is so good why are you so good zorn why are you so good it's genius um but yeah 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 um that's my time for today. Thank you guys so much for amazing birthday stream. Loved it. We got to a decent stopping point right now on our on our Dark Angel. We're going to pick that back up next week. Um, I'm actually probably going to take the weekend off from streaming. Um, this archive will be up on the YouTube channel. So uh, be sure to to uh, go there. Let me, let me come over here. And I think it's YouTube user... Tommy V2, is that right? Is that right, is that correct? That is not correct, okay. Um, oh, I think I know what it is. Is it? Yes, okay, without the U. So, here we go. 
uh, youtube.com slash kami v2 so there's some tutorial videos up there so there's some brush videos up there um i do sell and give away brush packs and stuff so all those links are there um i did a full hour and a half long video about the different art stuff that i use um yeah using the mixer brush paint like your heroes um digital painting software overview is using reference considered cheating yes or no what brushes do you use we answer the question how do you get rid of imposter syndrome a lot of that stuff's on there. I usually post a few videos a month um, on the art side. But now that we're streaming, we should be streaming more. So that's good. Uh, but thank you all so much for a great, great, great day. A huge thank you to Stroll for gifting so many subs. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy that you guys are here. Let me get you that Discord link one more time. Um, we will post that into chat so if you want to chat if you want to get some art advice uh just kind of hang out show us what you're working on uh just have a lot of cool community members doing our thing uh check us out go hit up the discord wes's art tavern open 24 7 we'd love to have you come put your feet up um we will we will see you soon but yeah that'll be me for this week um great week streaming next week i should be streaming probably wednesday Thursday, Friday, Saturday-ish. Um, multiple streams for sure. We're going to finish the Dark Angel. We might even play some video games. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be crazy? But anyways, um, we got some big talks as well. Um, maybe some special stuff coming up as far as what type of art we can show. Who knows? Uh, but until then, thank you so much for the, for the birthday wishes. Thank you for hanging out, being awesome. Appreciate you guys very, very much. But until next week, you guys stay safe. Take care. Hit me up on Insta and Twitter, all that stuff. And uh, we will catch you guys next time. Peace.